Good morning, Robert Scribbler. It is October 10th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I want to talk about a very serious, very dangerous, unprecedented situation that is now unfolding along the Gulf Coast of the United States, particularly in the Florida Panhandle and Western sections of the Florida Panhandle. And the situation is that overnight, Michael intensified beyond projected forecast intensities to a major category four hurricane with at present maximum sustained winds of 145 miles per hour and a minimum set central pressure of 931 millibars. This is an unprecedented situation for the US Gulf Coast and over the next four to eight hours, we will be seeing conditions along the Florida Panhandle that are likely historical and with, with a storm whose intensity for this region, we don't really have a corollary for, in particular for the Florida Panhandle. The storm itself has overshot model and official National Hurricane Center predictions by a bit. This model is a GFS model, which at the 0, 0600 Zulu hour was predicting a 958 millibar storm approaching the Florida Panhandle. We are about 27 millibars lower than that, which is a much, much more intense storm. Models and forecasts can sometimes overshoot. They can sometimes undershoot. The science of hurricane forecasting has been getting better over time. However, in a world that is being altered by human-caused climate change, in particular through warming ocean surfaces and increased atmospheric water vapor, the dice are loaded on the side of more intense storms and on potentially overshooting some forecast predictions, particularly if for forecast predictions rely on past climatology and don't take into account added atmospheric mo moisture levels. Of course, hurricane forecasts do take into account convection, sea surface temperatures, and a number of these scientific variables. So I'm not criticizing the models. Well, I'm just saying that in a warmer than normal world, the potential peak intensity of storms is increased and, and that can sometimes throw a wrench in forecasting. So looking at the satellite shot, the infrared satellite shot, we see a very severe looking storm with a, a, an intense central dense overcast, very high cloud tops, particularly on the south side of the storm and a very well represented eye as the storm moves toward the Florida Panhandle. The National Weather Service enhanced radar also shows the storm running in and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit so that you can see the eye of the storm which is represented in the radar with very strong thunderstorms circling around the, the eye itself but with very powerful storms now lashing the Florida coast, the Florida Gulf Coast, and with conditions rapidly deteriorating. Unfortunately, since the storm rapidly intensified overnight, people along the coast had less warning for the storm's intensification. However, with a category three storm approaching these regions, yesterday, most of these regions should have been evacuated as about nine, well, 10 to, to six hours ago. At this point, it's going to be more and more dangerous and, and evacuation is going to be more difficult. I just like to point out that according to the National Weather Service, this is an unprecedented event. Um, the National Weather Service at Tallahassee has searched the historical database for Category 4 hurricanes that have made landfall in the Florida Panhandle and Big Bend area, which is where Michael is now tracking. 
And this map says it all. It's blank. This situation has never happened before. So this is an unprecedented historical situation for the Florida Panhandle region. We've had Category 4 and 5 storms strike the U.S. before, but never in this region. And what we can say is that various factors involved with human-caused climate change, such as warmer than normal sea surface temperatures and higher atmospheric water vapor loading, have lent to the peak intensity of Michael, enabling this unprecedented event. And I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit. I'd like to just go ahead and talk about some impacts. So according to the earlier reports from the National Hurricane Center, we had nine to 13 foot projected storm surge with the storm intensifying to category four status. The storm surge has, the storm surge forecast has also increased with a peak storm surge prediction increasing to around 14 feet, but with a much wi wider swath of six to nine foot storm surges in, in, in this storm. And, and regions from Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida, to the Oscilla River are expected to see nine to 14 foot storm surges. Okaloosa, Walt, the Walton County line to Tyndall Air Force Base is expecting to see a six to nine foot storm surge. And the Oscilla River to Cedar Key, Florida is expected to see a six to nine foot storm surge with, with lower storm surges further down the coast. This is a, um, this is a very, extensive storm surge and very intense storm surge prediction and, and we could possibly see some some very severe uh, it's almost certain that we're going to see some very severe coastal flooding from this storm in addition the storm is heavily laden with uh, atmospheric moisture and is expected to dump a large swath of four to ten inch rainfall stretching from the florida panhandle all the way through the Hampton Roads region and the eastern shore of Virginia with hot spots along the Florida Panhandle into extreme south west Georgia and in through parts of North Carolina and southern northern north north central North Carolina and south central Virginia along the border. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just pull up uh, another model because I just I just like to look at this a little bit more here. I'm going to pull up Earth Null School. So this storm is is, is is a surprise to a number of us with its intensity. However, it's, it's not that we didn't have some hints that the storm itself could be rather strong. And the primary limiters for this storm have, have been wind shear. We haven't really had much in the way of, of dry air. And just looking at this on the wind map, uh, for Earth Null School is 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 just really impressive and and really makes me concerned about people living along the Gulf Coast. We got 33 foot wave heights here uh, approaching the Florida coast, according to this model. And looking at sea surface temperature anomalies, the storm is moving through oceans that are 2.6 degrees Celsius above normal which is providing a lot of fuel, which is one of the hints we had that, that this storm could be rather intense. And, and going back to air and looking at precipitable moisture, we can see that, that Michael is embedded in this, this large dome of, of atmospheric moisture with, with very little dry air to speak of, and large plumes of atmospheric moisture running in both ahead and behind it providing a, a lot of convective fuel for the storm. And this is a concern to me as the storm moves over land, that the storm could maintain a strong intensity as it moves to the north and east for a long period of time. We don't have much time left in this, this video blog segment. So I'd just like to say that, that this storm is yet another storm where we see the fingerprints of human-caused climate change it is a very severe event that is local to have extraordinary impacts for the from the Florida for the Florida Panhandle in the form of stor storm surge flooding and wind damage, but is also likely to dump copious amounts of moisture over areas that have already been flooded. Thank you for joining me.
and I'll be chatting with you soon.